nine, I was six feet down in the grave, ten feet down, seeing my mother come down, bro. She was coming down in a white cloth, and the white cloth has got blood on it, bro. Yeah. And I see blood, and she comes down, and and even then, bro, I couldn't cry, bro. Like, I couldn't tear, bro. And I see my mother's face one more time, just say, Ummi, khair in it. Catch you in Jannah, inshallah. But I made, man made my, um, my, alhamdulillah, if it wasn't for Allah, I wouldn't know where I'd be, bro. Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. Now I've become dull to death, bro. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Voice of Idris podcast show. I'm joined by a lovely guest, uh, long awaited guest. I've, I've wanted to actually sit down with this brother for quite a while. I'm joined by the one and only Abdul Fattah. Abdul Fattah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for having me here, bro, man. I appreciate it, man. Blessings, bro. Blessings. Abdul Fattah, though. Abdul Fattah. Abdul Fattah. Yeah, Explain the name. So, uh, Abdul Fattah, uh, Fattah is Al Fattah, one of Allah's names. And obviously, Abdul, the servant of Allah. So, the servant of the opener. Beautiful. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an Arabic name. It's a common Somali name, though. Really? Not many Bengali people have it. So, I'm from Bangladesh. And you'd have like an odd one or two, but bro, in Somalia, Abdi Fattah, yeah. Abdul Fattah, I met about like five, bro. So I kind of like relate to the Somali people. MashaAllah, you're holding to a really beautiful name, yeah, though. Barakallah, fiq, bro. How does that feel when you, you walk out? You know what? Abdul Fattah is a powerful name. Not many people know, like, especially like, uh, like I was on a podcast the other day and I said, my name is Abdul Fattah. And they're like, wow. I was like, it's, 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 you know normal, what? I you know felt what I'm saying? that, though. I felt that when I read your name and also when you just explained it to me now, yeah. I felt that power. Yeah. It's a powerful name. My, nan's, my, nan, my nan always tells me, she always reminds me, yeah. like, your name is Abdul Fattah. You have one of Allah's names. You know, you have to, like... Honour it. Honour it, bro, the correct way. You know, stay away from bad and just do good. Mashallah. So I, I keep getting reminded by my nan. MashaAllah. Do you think she plays a big part in your life? Uh, big, big part, bro. Wallahi, bro. Uh, Obviously, my mother passed away in 2019, okay. and my nan is still here, and she lost two daughters. She has four children, two sons, and two two daughters. Two of the daughters have gone. Wallahi, bro, I swear, bro, she is one of the strongest women I know, bro. She's lost brothers, she's lost sisters, she's lost children, and the woman is strong. Like she's in her late 80s, bro. Ramadan, fast every day. She lost her husband, 96. She's been, she's been by herself since 96. Um, my granddad, he was brain damaged and he died uh, because due to that. But she, 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 like, she's old, bro. But bro, Fajr wakes up. Dhuhr, on time. Asr, on time. Maghrib, on time. Esha, on time. Everything is just A1. And I see like, her character in my mother. Do you know what I'm saying? And I realize, okay, now I know where my mother gets her from. And my mother has given that character to my sisters. So when I see my sisters, wallahi, bro, good women, bro. Good women. My, my mother has carried, uh, has raised good women by herself. So it, in that way, it's like, you got to see the tree in it. Who's above that? And who's above that? That's my nan, bro. Makes sense. Bro. So that's uh, it's, it's, it's a massive part. She always reminds me. Wallahi, she's a good woman, a pious woman. Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah for my nan. Inshallah, bro. You really, you already hit me already. Nah, you know? bro, man. My nan, I didn't know any of this information. Speaking about my nan, bro, I, should have, I was supposed to call her as well yesterday and I didn't even call her. So, you know, you kind of remind me. I didn't me. even know any of this information, you know. Nah, alhamdulillah. I didn't bro. even know about your mother. And, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is, bro. It's, it's, this is life, innit? You know, uh, we're here for a short time and we return. That's it. Man, that, remember. That's how, that's how simple, that's how short life is, bro. So you have to uh, cherish every moment of life. Especially if you're a parent, you know, if the if there's viewers out there who have their mothers still and their parents, you know, just stay as close as possible, you know, just keep them happy, man. That's it. I know, bro. Yeah. One of my biggest struggles was um being able to show affection and emotion towards my mum. Wow. And only recently I'm twenty three, only recently I just started showing that affection towards my mum. But when I tell you the weight and the weight I felt coming off my shoulder when I started showing affection to my mum, can't explain to you, bro. It felt like my whole life there was like this constant dark cloud and this this heavy weight, and I always knew what it was. It was the fact that I wasn't being appreciative towards my mum. We didn't have any black bad blood or anything, 
But I just struggled to show her emotion. I struggled to say I love you to her. And just hearing you, what you just said now, it hit me because I remember the moment I decided to call my mum. SubhanAllah, I was at home, right? I was at home alone. And my mum went away for just a week or so. And it felt, I felt so empty and lonely because my mum went away, which has happened a lot of times in the past. I've gone away on holiday or whatever. Like, it's not like I've never not been around my mum, but I was away and I called her, bro. And I just started crying. And I told her, like, I'm so sorry. I told her, I love you. Like I said, I'm so sorry for never showing you this affection. And then after that, subhanAllah, like, I just felt so good. I felt so relieved. I felt Finally, I felt like I've let go of these chains that were holding me back. Yeah. And a big reason why is because I watched this video that was um, a woman was giving birth. And it was from the perspective of the husband who was like going through it, knowing that his wife is in the in the you know hospital giving birth and stuff. Subhanallah, bro. What our mothers had to go through to bring us onto this earth. Hey, bro. Amazing, isn't it? Beautiful. Well, like, we can never repay them for what they've done, bro. Even never. Uh, being in their stomach for night, nothing, bro. Nothing in this world can repay what they, they they go through, bro. Yeah. You know, and and this 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 is something that we should, you know, inshallah when uh, when we have children ourselves and our wives are going through that. We should appreciate them, you know what I'm saying? Like, because they're the mother of our children, you know what I'm saying? So this is, uh, they hold a very high status in, in, in society, you know, our women. The women in Islam, they hold a high status, you know, and one of them is a mother, you know? Yeah. So even having a daughter, she becomes a gate, you know, and, and once, once she is married, she has now completed the deen of, uh, the, of, the of, of, of her partner. And then when she has children, you know, Allah gives Jannah under her feet. So this is this is, is powerful, bro. Our women are powerful, bro. And they need to understand this, you know what I'm saying? Like the Muslim women, they need to understand their status in society, bro. It's, it's above all other women, bro. SubhanAllah, bro. So, oh. Allah, mothers, bro. Allah, and on one thing, you're 23, bro. Young brother, man. I lost my mother at 23. And, bro, just... I'd wish to call my mother, man, and have that phone call, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I go out with my bedrooms, we're away for a few days, and they're speaking to their marge, and I see there on their phone, like, I was speaking with my boy yesterday. I was like, you know, when we went, when we went out to Manchester, and I saw you, you call your mum, you know how hard that was for me just to see, bro? Like, just, just to see how, just to see mum on the phone, bro, because I used to see, I used to, I used to see mother on my phone, and I don't no longer see that. But you know what? Alhamdulillah, you know, the way Allah works, you know, we're, we're Muslims, bro. Oh, sorry, but I need to keep it hard. Nah, nah, nah. Wallahi, bro. Honestly, Wallahi, bro. bro. It's, alhamdulillah, bro. bro. Wallahi, alhamdulillah. That's mad. I, you know what? I can't complain, bro. I'm a Muslim. We can still give to our mothers, even when they're gone, our parents when they're gone. Sadaqa jariya, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Allah has given that. So, alhamdulillah, you know, I feel sad for the Revert brothers and sisters that aren't able to, you know what I'm saying? So, we're Muslims, we're Muslims. That's the contentment I have. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah bro. bro. I can't complain, bro. Nor can I shed a tear, bro. Yeah. That's it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. I feel like a lot of people are going to need to hear what you nah, just said, bro. Nah, nah. It's a, uh, you know what? We, just, we should understand this already, man. Yeah. You know, we only realize how important an individual is once they're gone. You know what I'm saying? So, this is how selfish human beings can be, bro. You know? I feel like that's with everything now as well. Like, not just your parents, but your friend, your. Et- you only realize the value of someone when they leave. No. But when they're there, you take them for granted. Too much, bro. And sometimes they also say it's not that you only value them when, when they leave. You when they're there, you just never think you're gonna lose them. You just think they're always gonna be there. But in reality, with everything, you might be with someone, your partner, you might have a friend, your siblings, your family, your parents, you think they're always gonna be there. You think you're never gonna lose them. Movie in it. It's a movie, bro. Yeah. And then, bam. That's it. You lose that person. Comes and to only that moment of time you realise what you had. 100%. That is why, in that moment of time, bro, I said to myself, put my pride aside, my ego, my, my manhood, and I said, you know what? I'm going to call my mum and I'm going to tell her what I needed to tell her. And, and I said it to her, bro. And genuinely, cried my eyes out. 
And I just told her, bro. And subhanAllah, even after that experience, it's like life was giving me more blessings after it. Yeah, bro. Like Allah was giving me blessings and showing me that what you did was right and you had to do that. And I'm proud of you. And I'm, I felt that. And I was so happy for that, bro. bro. It's the easiest, easiest door to Jannah, bro. Yeah. Our, our parents. Easiest, bro. Yeah, bro. And once that goes, that's it. Your door's closed, bro. So once you have that door, bro, take as much advan uh, advantage of it, bro. Utilize it, you know? Because, like, like you said, bro, everything comes to an end, innit? Yeah. Our parents are getting older. That's it, bro. My, They're just my mom, older. I look at her and I'm thinking, bro, she looks tired now. You know what I'm saying? SubhanAllah. Look, only, only 10, 15 years ago, Taking me, my brothers, three kids to the park, like like there's nothing, and she probably had her own problems going on and her own struggles and her own stresses, but she did it with with such a smile, yeah. and now you look at her, and you're like, raw, she can't, oh, she can't do that no more, you know, and it's like it's now my duty to step up, I have to be the one that needs to make sure she's alright, take care of her, provide for her, do these things, Alhamdulillah, bro, it's, it's the only thing. Like even then, bro, you won't be able to repay her for what she's done, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's what important. helped you in that moment in time, like in that difficult moment of time? Would you say? So basically, uh, let's take it back now. Twenty, I was 21. My mother was diagnosed with pneumonia. So she, throughout my whole life, my childhood life, she was, uh, she, she was diabetic. You know, she wasn't the best of person to look after it. And um, so yeah, she when I was 21, she got diagnosed with pneumonia, and then. Um, so she was pronounced dead at 20, when I was 21. She, she was pronounced dead, bro. This was 2016, December, 25th of, this, uh, 25th of December. So she was d d pronounced dead for 30 minutes, bro. For 30 minutes. Like, bro, I saw death in his eyes, bro. Like, eyes, I, eyes rolled back, tongue out, bro. And I wasn't practicing there. I was around with the wrong people. And I come into the hospital, I'm like, shouting, like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Like, the, the, what's happened? There's two doctors in there, five nurses, a machine that keeps on saying no response, no response, no response. And I'm just screaming, bro. And when I say about my sisters, well, they're very good, strong women, bro. My middle sister left the room, went to Sajud, bro. Went to Sajud, came back into the room. She heard the pulse of my mother. They were going to stop, bro. Because they heard the pulse, uh, because she heard the pulse, they took her into theatre. So they took her into theatre now. And then... Doctor comes out. I told the doctor, doctor, tell me the truth. Like, what's going to happen to my mother? And he's like, maybe an hour, maybe a couple hours, but today she's definitely going to go. <laughs> so this is the doctor telling me that my mother's going to go. These are the people that follow theories. You understand? They follow, they, they only tell you from experiences. But the one who is control of somebody's life, the one who takes... <sighs> Is Allah, and that's what man didn't forget. And man's taking up this guy's, this doctor's, uh, you know, um, comment and being like, "Yeah, ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm gone now. My mom's dead. I'm calling people. Yo, my mom's gonna die today. Blah 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 blah, bro. Wallahi, like, my mother was alive for three more years, bro. For three more years, she was alive. People from ICU, she was intensive care for three months, bro. She didn't have no memory, no nothing, and. People said, she's not going to come back from this, bro. My mother came back, bro. She came back. Doctors from ICU couldn't believe it, bro. The, the, he couldn't He was a Muslim as well. One of the doctors was a Muslim in the ICU. He looked after my mother. And he said, Wallahi, man, I've never, like in my 20, 30 years of being a doctor, I've never seen something like this. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and, and obviously there and then, like I started practicing. But it was one of those ones, you know, like I was in and out, in and out. Do you understand? And then I was, sh that whole day when, when, the, when the next day, sorry, uh, my mom, when she, was, when she come out of the theater and she was in the ICU, I was, I, was, I was praying, bro, praying, crying to Allah, bro, crying. And then a couple of days later, man kind of lets go, go of it. Alhamdulillah, my mom, like, my mom's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mom's good. 8th of January, 2017. I, another, another cardiac arrest, bro. Another cardiac arrest, quick one. And the doctor said, if she has one more, that's it, she's gone. So now, man go like, this is me. You see, you see how man is. Yeah. When everything's going well, we forget Allah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah.
But when everything's going bad, that's when we cry, cry, cry. Allah, I need help. Please get me out of this situation. Please help my mother. Please do this. Please, please, please. He gives. And you forget. And I forget, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and, and if, from that day, like, I just thought, you know what? I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't be an ungrateful guy like that, man. Look what he's done for me, you know? And Allah gave my mother back. And then now she's coming out of hospital a few months later. And within within when she was in ICU, she didn't know, but remember, nobody else. She didn't. She thought my sisters were nurses. She only remembered me, bro. Oh, she only rem she only remembered me, bro. Man, so my mother, it was hard, bro. Tube, uh, she had a tube going in her mouth. She couldn't barely open her eyes. But when she opened her eyes, like she'll point at me, like she'll know, man. Like from time when we got photos, just for, like we put the photos where she was, of the of of all the family, like my sisters and myself, just so she can remember. But she couldn't. She only remembered me, bro. And she remembered her mother. That's Allah it. Akbar. So, and that's how I knew, man. My mother's my bedroom, bro. That's my, <laughs> that's my homie, bro. Like all this time, man's been ungrateful, and I just want to give the world back to my mother. You know, twenty, twenty one years, man didn't do nothing for my mother, bro. You know, dunya, 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 chasing dunya, bro. I, he took me away from the most important thing to me. And then obviously afterwards, my mom come out now. See, being in being bed bound for so long, you know, it takes a toll on you, you know. And then she must have come out and she dropped. And that's another test now. <laughs> Hips brought gone. Now she's bed with him, wheelchair, bro. So obviously I was studying uni at the time as well, but I had to step back a bit. Second year, first week, I kinda stepped back. Because mentally I wasn't there, bro. Seeing my mother going like through this, it was it was very tough for me. And she was on wheelchair. I'd push her everywhere. My older sister, may Allah be pleased with her, man. Bro. Like, cleaning, cleaning my mother, bro. You know? My nan, bro, her daughter. I mean, her, her, my, my, she was cleaning her daughter at such big age, bro. Imagine mentally how, that, how that's, like, gonna feel for you. Like, you can't even scrub your own, you know what I'm saying? You can't go to the toilet. You can't get fed properly. Yeah. Her, whole, her, her whole room was changed into a hospital, bro. Hospital bed, hospital, you know, and... Like, it was tough. It was very tough. And then 2019, uh, October 6, 2019, uh, that's when she passed away. She was in her bed. But you see the two, the, two, the, two, the two situations now. From 2016 on the 25th when she was pronounced dead to 2019, October the 6th. This one was scary. 2016 was scary. But 2016, 2019, bro, Allah took her in her sleep. SubhanAllah. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the image from 2016 to the image compared to the image in 2000, it's as if Allah has wiped away all of her sins. She was in wheelchair. She was on a wheelchair. Hardship. Maybe that hardship. She was in pain, crying every day, bro. Every day I used to listen to my mother cry, bro. Cry, cry, cry. And then... In my head, I was thinking, you know what? Allah is wiping my mother's sins away. So let her be. Wow. So let her be. You know what I'm saying? And wallahi, when my mother went, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, bro. I didn't have no tears, bro. I couldn't I couldn't cry, bro. I couldn't cry, bro. And then when, 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 when we had to bury her now, only thing was coming out of my mouth throughout the day, from the get-go, from the janazah, from the masjid, the only thing that was coming out of my mouth was La ilaha illallah Muhammad yeah, yeah. That's it Ultimat it Naturally It was just coming out I would say it loud I'd say I don't care who's listening La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah These are the only words that are coming out Because The show The, 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 the pain the, 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 like, the suffering of my mother Seeing that For the past three years You know It went, became light And I put contentment in my heart bro I was in nine, I was six feet down in the grave, ten feet down, seeing my mother come down, bro, come down, and there was a tube. She had a tube in her for the dialysis, you know. When they got the tube out, obviously there was some part where it was bleeding. Yeah. She was coming down in a white cloth, and the white cloth has got blood on it, bro. Yeah. And I see blood, and she comes down and put her in the grave, and even then, bro, I couldn't cry, bro. Like I couldn't tear, bro. And I told the guy that was next to me, the brother from Garden of Peace, Hassan. He's a good Bulgarian brother. I said, Hassan, like, can I see my mother's face one more time? One more time. 
So he looked away, unveiled her, kind of like went over, and I just said, Ummi, khayrin, kachun jannah, inshallah. That's it. That's where I made, man made my, um, my, my promise, you know. This is not promise to my mother, but it was a promise to Allah, innit? So Allah, let me, let me try to do as good as possible in this dunya so I could, you know, reunite with my mother in Jannah, inshallah. I couldn't give her much here, but inshallah, in, 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 in Jannah, man could give her what I can, as much as I can, a palace, maybe a palace or so. You know, and, and that's there and then, you know, my whole life, man was on pilot, bro, pilot mode. Uh, what do they call it when you're when the when the plane goes on its own? Autopilot. Autopilot. I was on autopilot throughout my whole life, and there and then I understood my purpose, bro. My purpose was just to be a good Muslim, bro. That's it. Allah gave my purpose in the grave, in that grave, bro. Inside that grave, He gave me my purpose, bro. I realized Shana my purpose Allah. there and then. Alhamdulillah. If it wasn't for Allah, I wouldn't know where I'd be, bro. Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim, and that's the contentment bro. that I have, bro, in my heart, bro. That's the contentment that I'm a Muslim. If I do as good as possible. Allah will give me more in Jannah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, with my social media, that's when my social media platform came out and that's where it was, it was sparked from. You know, Alhamdulillah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to do as much as possible just so I could please my Lord and see my mother again. That's man's, that's man's objective. That's man's goal in, it, in, in dunya, bro. That's it, bro. You're doing a really good job, bro. Nah, like, I need to do more, bro. I need to do more. We need to, you know, as Muslims, we should strive to do as much as possible, you know. Our time here is very short, brother. That's it. That's the obviously there's more is more 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 in depth, but obviously it's yeah. Oh, it's just so quick and snappy. Yeah. What a journey, bro. <sighs> that's it. That's the all fact, it is, isn't it? The fact you're even still just saying like the words that's coming out of your mouth, say Alhamdulillah. That's it. I'm in shock, bro. You know, understand it. It's life. Now I've become dull to death, bro. Like, yeah. I I don't fear it. Because I know it's going to happen. Like yeah. when people speak of death, I've lost some. I've become dull to it, bro. I don't know how to relate, bro. Really? Like, you know, yeah, You know what I'm saying? Where was your father in all of this? So, my father, like, my relationship with my father wasn't the best. Um, don't get me wrong, my father gave us what, like, he gave us everything, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we wanted, he gave us when we was kids. Um money, whatever it was, but it was time he didn't give. And I feel like time is the most important thing, especially coming up, you know, where I was raised, North London, you know, you're from North yourself, yeah. bro, you know, it's, it's, it's tough round it's here, rough, do you get yeah. it? And I feel like you're in the most, you're in a tougher place. Like, no, I'm from like city North, you're from like inner the North. Heart of heart of, North. Heart, of, heart of North is, uh, you hear about wood green sides and stuff, is it's, it's there, but my own, it was still bad, but it was more like towards the racist, Mom was very racist where I was, where I where I grew up, so I like I needed a father figure throughout my life. And I didn't find that, so it, it it was tough. And the relationship between me, and my father, my mother, and my father, it it was it was tough growing up. And he was he would, they were together, but like he would be he would be working away. Yeah. He's hustling, bro. You know what I'm saying? Providing for his family. Like I said, there's more than money, bro. It's time yeah. that you need. And at the time. You know they weren't on good terms, anyways. It's only because of you know, like like we said any before, man. Like you only you only understand how important someone is until they're gone in it, and that's like my dad didn't. Like he only realized how important my mother was until she left. You know, and of course, when when she got when she was pronounced dead first time in two thousand sixteen, you know, he, he he was he wasn't his relationship with with everyone in the family was kind of like distance. Like nobody in my mother's side could like uh, like see him. Do you get it? Like they, they weren't sh they weren't on good terms, um, and uh, it was like my dad with my father was embarrassed to come to the hospital to even see my mother and stuff like that. He was just coaching oh, on his bro. own and stuff like that. My relationship with my father was bad, bro. Man didn't speak for him to, for, with him for like four or five years, bro. Before you know, four or five only because of my mother's situation, it changed my perspective. Changed, you know what I'm saying? Like he's my dad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened in the past, bro, he's still my dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man didn't leave, bro. Man still, man still was still there. So I thought, you know what? Let me apologize to my father. You know, ego aside, and yeah. and then and then my mother and my father's relationship became better and better and better and better until you know she left. You know, she, I don't know whether he whether he visits her or not in the grave. Uh, the um, burial, um, 
the ceremony uh, at so the so. Greek cemetery. So, uh, but their relationship it only got better when she got ill in it. That's it. That, uh, that's it, bro. Do you feel like as you grew up, obviously being a man, you understand the role of a man and what it takes to be a man and. Do you feel like maybe that allowed you to come to peace with maybe why the reason your dad wasn't as present? Now I understand, yeah. Now I understand. But then at the same time, it's like... It's not an excuse. You could, Not an excuse, bro. You could have done something else, bro. Why are you, like, why are you working like Quay just for for money, bro? Like mm. You could have come closer to home and worked, you know? Like He was coming once a year throughout my whole life. Well, I really? mean, once a week, sorry. Once a week, throughout my whole life, once a week. And when he'd come, all it all it was was negative, bro. So when he'd come, I'd just see negative, pure negative, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it was nothing good that, like, like he taught me, you know? He didn't teach me. So, okay, cool, he taught me how to ride a bike, bro. You know what I'm saying? He'd, he'd teach me. So, like, I'd ride a bike one week. Then I have to wake up. I would have to wait a whole other week for him to teach me again. Yeah. Do you get it? So he tried to do his bit, you know? I don't know what his circumstances was back then. I was a kid, but like I said, uh, more important things than money, bro. Were you raised with like Islam in from a young age? Not really. No, I wasn't. Like I, my 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 nan was the only woman that in the whole family was like on What's point. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Point. Um, but my mother, she would fast, she would pray there and then. Like her illness, like her her having diabetes had a massive impact on her lifestyle. Do you know get Like, she was... There was days where she was weak, you know, she couldn't get out of bed. And I've been seeing this since young and bro. Like, when I've grown up. It's like my older sister kind of raised me in a way. And she's only three years older than me, bro. But she, she played the massive role, that mother's role at, like, 12, bro, 13. Do you get it? She was paying bills at 13, my older sister, bro. She was helping, she was helping my mother out and stuff. Like, I don't want to get into details. Whatever's done is done in it. You know, there's more to this story, but it's one of them ones. I don't really want to share it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, th- that that's really it. Isn't it? Like, even going, like thinking about thinking yeah, about certain course. situation, I don't even want to go down yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, man, left course. it. So hundred percent. So bro. so I apologize for not. No, you're cool. You know what I'm saying you're cool. I just wanted to kind of understand whether or not, like, for me when I when I grew up, obviously I was growing up with the fundamentals of Islam, no. prayers. Um, reading Arabic, reading the Quran, memorizing the surahs and stuff. But only to a later later age did I understand what I was doing. No, because when I was younger, my parents they just taught me that I have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes a mistake that parents make in today's society, and I hope I'm not gonna make that mistake, is that I don't want to just force my children to do these things, but instead to be taught why we're doing these things. Maybe also instill the love of what we're doing in our hearts. Because later on down the line, I realized the love I have for praying because it takes me away from worldly problems. It's a five minute conversation I have personally with Allah, away from everyone. But when I was young, prayer was just cross your hands, just do it. go up and down, come back, say a salam as much as quick as possible, run off to do what I needed to do. So I want people to learn to teach their children and us for our children to instead of being violent and aggressive and forcing it down them instead teach them why because not many people down the line want to discover why we do these things many of us instead of that we rebel because of the aggression that was taught towards us Mm -hmm. they rebel and they just go away from it and they see islam and everything as a negative so it's important that instill the love yeah. for these things. 100%. So important. From your childhood, from, from young, then you start to slowly see that person grow and become... You can tell the person's soft inside and you can tell them they've yeah, got yeah. that love. Like, the way you're speaking now, I can see your heart right now is pure. I can I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel it, bro. Wow. You know, you can, feel, you, can feel, you can feel the vibe that you get from someone and I can feel it from no, you. No, 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 no. Bro, trust me. Like, you, 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 like it's, it's good, man, but... I'm still really taken back with everything what you said to me um, because like I feel like even when I just spoke to you about my little moment that I had with my my mother I feel guilty bro I feel like I feel like there's so much more work to do I, I have more work to do and maybe this today was probably an even bigger uh, sign for me to, for it to happen because not just me but also maybe the, the whoever however many people are going to watch this 
it could be a sign for them to just say to themselves, you know what, take care of your parents, make sure you hold on to them, treasure them, because one day you're going to be like you in that grave, looking up as That's your it. mother's body is just being raised down. down. That's it. SubhanAllah, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't even want to imagine that. I don't even want to picture what that's going to look like because not many of us will hold firm like the way you have. A lot of us will break. And I pray that we are not in that position. Bro. I pray. Lie, I pray that I'm never going to be in that position. Nah, it's a, but it's a reality check. 100%. It's a big wake up 100%. call. 100%. Like, you wouldn't even want to wish it on your worst enemy. No bro. way. But this is, it's, it's something, it's inevitable, isn't it? And once you understand this, you're good, bro. Yeah, you seem like you've come to peace with it, bro. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. You seem like... Whatever. I feel... But you know what? I think that's because of Allah, bro. Only. Only because of Allah. I genuinely bro. think it's only that's because it. of Allah. That, that, that's the simple you know, answer. You know, sometimes the people who struggle the most have the hardest hardships. Why do you see them still smiling and saying Alhamdulillah? Because Allah has given them that power. Allah has given them that ability to do it. And I've seen videos of children in war-torn countries saying, Alhamdulillah, I think to myself, how? Because only because of Allah. Because they grew up with that, innit? like you said. You yeah. know, uh, they grew up with having Islam in their life. You know, and like, war-torn countries were usually those that understand Arabic. and So they know everything. Like us, we're like kind of born into it. You yeah. know, we have to do it because... It's a, part, it's a part of it you know mm. it's a part of growing up you know going to, like we didn't we were reading arabic at home with a bengali teacher mm. telling us alif ba ta ta jim ha ha dal dal yeah. even then doing mistakes yeah. whereas these guys they're born into it like you see the situation in syria and and, 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 and turkey. turkey like see these children bro like the 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 thing they have the the akhlaq they have like at that such young age you know you know losing their parents and stuff so I feel like for them, these guys are just, they're different breeds, bro. Yeah. They're different, bro. Because they understand it. They understand Quran because they've yeah. been taught it correctly. And I feel like it's an important part, you know, growing up. It is, it is, you need to be taught correctly. Know what you're saying, you know. Uh, understand what you're saying. And we only do that now because we understand. We have, like, we have, we have classes that we can attend to. You know, whereas before we didn't have that. Mm. But they tried. Our parents still tried. 100%, yeah, yeah. But, no, man, I'm grateful for yeah. what my parents did. 100%. Yeah, like, well, like, bro. Because I would hate to have to do all that homework now exactly. at a time where I'm so busy with other things yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's harder. But again, there's no excuses. Yeah, yeah. So I still do encourage people that if they are slacking on anything, there's work to do. There's work for all of us to do. Always, but especially, bro. especially when Ramadan comes, like the opportunity that we have to do it it's not only when Ramadan starts that you start. No. You can start before. before it's the preparation that happens before. And th that's where I feel like it's crucial. People need to take action. Is yeah. leading up to something. Because a lot of people, what happens is Ramadan comes and they go from one extreme to the other so quickly yeah. that it's, the, it's such a high rise that it's going to be such a high fall. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And they can't maintain it. So that after what happens is they do it for a few days and they realize it's too extreme. It's not part of their lifestyle. They just go back. back off. They just back off and they say, oh, this is this is too much. Yeah. Well, instead, they need to, their approach should be, it's almost like a little bit of a warm-up. In anything you do in life, you do need to warm-up. No, no, no. You train, you go to play a match, you do anything, there's a warm-up stage behind it. There's a reason why it's a preparation. So with Ramadan coming up as well, for me, I realised, like, waking up for Fajr, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Like, it has to be within me. It has to be installed inside of me. Because I don't want to come to Ramadan times and I need to wake up, pray Fajr, or go to the mosque for it, and I'm like, oh, no, nah, man, I'm too tired. That's the most important time for it. The reward in that moment of time is so huge. I don't want to miss out on that, bro. 100%. I don't want to miss out on it on any other day. That's it. But especially coming to this time, this month of Ramadan, don't want to miss out on it, man. Just get as much good as possible for yeah. that month, man. And if, as well, like, the, the thing, I touched on this before when I spoke to you, before we started, but there's, when Ramadan approaches, you see a lot of people, a lot of brothers and sisters improving themselves, changing their ways. Mm -hmm. You see the sister who never used to wear the hijab starts to wear the hijab. You see the brother who maybe used to hang around the wrong crowd starts to hang around the right, right, right crowd, go to the masjid, do all these things. You start to see people maybe embodying Islam more. But the problem that we have is when we see that, we want to tarnish people. 
we want to bring him down. We want to tell that sister, like we want to make negative comments about it. We want to automatically start to think to ourselves the negative aspect of it. Oh, you never used to wear the hijab. You you did this and you did that and point out all the the the, the shortcomings of that person and you used to do this bad thing and you were hanging around the right, wrong people, but instead encourage that person. Maybe this could be the moment that they change. It changes them forever. This blessed month could maybe lead them for the rest of their life to wear the hijab, to go to the mosque, to let go of these bad habits. 100%. That's the problem we have right now. We're facing that problem, that toxicity, bro. It's so toxic, it's so negative, negative it's so judgmental. Wallahi, it's so judgmental. We're not encouraging to each other, to this ummah. None of us are encouraging towards each other. All we do is literally push each other away. All we do is push you. It's like we don't want to see the others do well. Because we feel it within ourselves that if that person does well, it's taken away from yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? I'm the one that's putting five teams. I've I'm been doing it. I've been doing it for yeah. like a, a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? This guy just jumped on five minutes. You just, yeah. Subhanallah, man. Mad, isn't it? It's crazy. We should encourage, bro. We should encourage. Push strive, strive. We push. should support that person. You don't know how hard that step could have been. Putting in that headscarf could have been the hardest thing for her. Going and making that prayer in the mosque yeah. could have been the hardest thing for that brother. Letting go of smoking, drinking, all these things could have been the hardest thing. We all have hardships. We all have addictions that we have faced. But we don't seem to support each other, man. I encourage, I encourage, I encourage people to support each other. Yeah, bro. So important. You never know. like Your, in, your, your little encouragement, your little push could be the, the one thing that they need for them to do it for the rest of their life. And who's getting rewarded? You as well. Exactly. Just because of that little encouragement. 100%. You, got, you know? I feel like it's important, man. It, it's very, very important that we help our brothers, our sisters, especially in the month of Ramadan. Mm. This is, it might be new to them. They might have not fast their whole life. Yeah. But, you know, encourage them to fast and you'll see, you'll see good coming out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you just be happy for them. That's it. We just got to be happy for one another, man. That's all it is, bro. Well, like, we just got to be happy with one another, man. And, and just be positive. Well, uh, as much as I want to say again and again, bro, we're Muslims, man. Like, we should be happy, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> but we should be the most happiest people in the world, bro. Yeah. Uh, Allah's given us this religion, bro. He's chosen you to be a Muslim, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a net, my bro. That's a no, blessing, 100%. bro. 100%. Biggest of blessings, bro. Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah, yeah, bro. bro. It's crazy, bro. You're so gas, bro. You know when someone recognizing you, you're a Muslim just because you're, yeah, I'm a Muslim. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. a little bit of like, like you take pride, pride in that, like yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, like good pride though. Yeah, I'm a Muslim. Oh, where the thought? Yeah, I'm a. Mu oh, you smell? Where is that smell? Where is that? It's a Muslim smell. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So, <laughs> nah, it's 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 fun, especially non-Muslim when they realize no, that you're Muslim, yeah. you, you get kind of. Because as well, what, the times we're living in now. Islam has just been constantly tarnished. Yeah, yeah. It's been tarnished forever. Yeah, now, more than, now Islam has been tarnished more than yeah. ever. But it will never lose. No. Never, it will never bro, lose. Bro, never ever. Never. Islam ever. will never fold. You, it will you, never crumble. You can do anything, bro. Yeah. You know? Manipulate them with your voice, manipulate them with your TV, with whatever, whatever it may be. Your education, phone, anything. Eh, nothing. 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 Allah has perfected the religion, bro. And he's perfected it through the believers, bro. Yeah. You know, so we have to, you know, hold that. Hold, hold. that honor, bro. You know. Hold. You know, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anh, he narrated that, you know, before Islam, we had nothing. And Allah gave us Islam. The whole world, the, the, the whole world is in our palm, bro. You know. Without Islam, you're nothing, bro. Without Islam. But if you have Islam, everything, bro. Yeah. Everything. You know. And the... Uh, the support it allows you to have in moments of difficulty is priceless. Hundred yeah, percent, bro. Hundred percent, bro. It's like even like brotherhood, man. The brotherhood in Islam is nothing like it, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know you, bro. You, well, you know I, what I'm I feel saying? like I've known you my yeah. whole life. But do you know what I'm trying to say? Like we might not know each other personally, but bro, we have this. You're my brother in Islam, bro. Yeah. I love you for the sake of Allah, bro. You know what I'm Allah, saying? Yeah. If something was about to go on outside, bro. And I, and I recognize that you, bro, I'm stepping in, you know what I'm trying to say? And that that's how it should be, bro, man. And that's why you can't you can't break it, bro. Not the the strongest of winds can't even shake it, you know what I'm saying? And why, bro? Because Allah has perfected everything, bro. Every little deal is perfected, bro. He's done his way. And speaking about it, bro, just give me 
Yeah, 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 goosebumps. Yeah. I had the goosebumps before as well, bro. <laughs> I was feeling goosebumps. Yeah. I didn't want to point it out. I felt goosebumps. Like yeah, man. big part of this conversation is giving me goosebumps, man. man. I didn't even know this all about you. I didn't know the mentality. I could feel it. Nah, but the Joke, mentality, yeah, bro. Nah, you're switched on. Know, man. No, you're very trying, switched on. No. We try in it. We can we only have try, to. bro. That's it. You have to. You know what's mad as well. I, I actually need to point out something because. I saw you post it the other day. Um, screenshot it. I wanted you to comment on it actually, because I thought it was it was really true. You said, "Please." Uh, this is a post I think you made on Twitter, I guess, and then you posted it on your Instagram. Oh, okay. So I went through it. I, obviously, it says, "Please don't take advice from social media on how to be a man uh. and what qualities you need, etc." It's very simple. Research and read upon the greatest of man, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should be the only man we should strive to be like. Yeah. No, nah, it's, bro, it's, it's especially nowadays, bro, man. Like, why seek this role model and that role model and that? Where when our role model have already been established, bro. The Sahabas in every category, in every department, that there's a role model, bro. From from a woman to a male to to a man to a teacher to a leader, whatever it may be, the Prophet Sallallahu he just holds all of that on a high level. Do you get it? He's, he's the best of teachers, the best of leaders, the best of father, the best of uh, uh, husbands. So why do we need to seek this person for a role model or that person for a role model? Nowadays, there's a lot of, like, I say brothers, there's a lot of brothers out there. Um, and, 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 it, and it's scary times as well because it's only going to affect the younger brothers, you know. It's only going to affect the youth on how to be a man. You don't need to seek advice from this but The time that you spend on social media seeking these advices just go read a book or read or research upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's the best of man so we don't need to do that allah has already established role models for us to follow and and, and if you actually like th- these are like rijal bro you know what i'm saying yeah, these yeah. are these are men bro real men, real men bro yeah abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an bro yeah. like these were fought wars, battles. Wars, bro. Everything. There were caliphs and that. There were help. There were. There's a story of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu when he he would pray in the morning, and then after he prayed, he would go and help this old woman who was blind. He would do the. Cho- this is a caliph, bro. Mm. The leader. The, the the this is like the the. It's like seeing today's leader going and do something so humbling and simple. Do you know what I mean? Simple. For some, for a woman that can't even Stranger. see, and she was looking at, all, she was looking after orphan, uh, orphans. He would feed her. He'd do all the chores and everything, everything. Like these are the men, bro. You know that we should, we should be like. You know this aspire to be like. You know, and 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 when I say strive, I mean like, do as much as you can. It's yeah. gonna be a bumpy road. Yes, we can't be, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but. We can take little little things that he did, you know, to to help us in our lives, bro. And 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 that's one thing. Like, I feel like it's important to say, man. After like certain certain individuals that's come out, you know, alhamdulillah, they're brothers now, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I don't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just Once that individual came out. So now everybody wants to be like. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's he's giving the confidence to everybody. Yeah. But bro, it's like. Stop giving your opinion, you know, on 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 how to be a man. You mm. know, where there's already there's, a, yeah. there's a, you can already take already. You know, you know what's interesting as well. Some of these people who are having such a uh, effect it could be positive or negative on people about Islam and stuff. Even they themselves are saying, "Don't look at me. Look at the real Romulus, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." Like Khabib, for example. There's that effect that Khabib's had mm. now into the into the world. Because he's represented Islam. And what I like about him is that he still reminds people that it's not me. Yeah. It's not me. I might be a good example, which is really good for him. Because you should be. You yeah. should carry yourself yeah, yeah. as a good example. You should show. But it's that constant reminder that it's not me. This is from Allah. The best person to follow is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I'm seeing a lot of individuals now. Now, they've seen this opportunity in this market of you know, self improvement, masculinity, and all that stuff, to the point where they're monetizing from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking to myself, how? Gaining. How are you monetizing from it? How are you how are you gaining from this this vulnerability of men? Which I I know there's that issue, but what I loved about your tweet, what I love that thing you said, is you're right, bro. We shouldn't even be looking at them first. Yeah. 
maybe you can hear some words of encouragement. Yeah, 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 yeah. But why are we not turning towards yeah. what we have in front of us yeah. written, written in the Quran, written in the hadiths, written in books, explaining how we should be, what we should do. There's a really good book. It's um, it's called the the Perfect Muslim. And it's just like, I read it and it's just trying to learn all aspects of how to be the best Muslim. How to be the best Muslim with your family, with your parents, with your father, uh, with your wife, with your friends, with the community. It, t- it touches upon yeah. bare different things. And I'm reading that book and I'm falling in love with it more than listening to a video of someone saying X, Y, and Z yeah, and doing this and it. And I was like, I can't do that no more. I can't do that no more, bro. I can't. Because it's like the time you sp- spend giving that you could easily have read. 100%. You know I'm or rely on your research. 100%. And there's always a catch to what I'm watching because yeah. at the end of the day, you're watching these things and then it's suddenly, oh, you need to buy my course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to do this. Yeah, you need to do that. It's crazy. Bro. And it's like, I, I'm also thinking back of my head, reading your course, buying your course, your book and all this stuff, it's like, what is there? What value is there yeah, that's going to help yeah. suddenly change me? Yeah. And if anything, it, it's so... It's 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 so polarizing and, and and it's like almost toxic to the point where it's also making men in a way now toxic as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 100%. making us have a bit of like a weird mentality of mm. certain things. Like it's pushing us to. There's such a divide now, bro. It's my point now. Oh, like, there's such a crazy. divide. There's such a divide between both women and men. It's mad. It's like you can't. They can't see each other. They bro. can't. They're just literally just barking at each other. You know, sometimes I speak to boys that I meet and. They're telling me how much they hate women, hate this, hate girls, hate this, hate that. And it's like, I know it's coming from a place of hurt. And same when you hear it coming from a woman, when they hate men, they hate men, hate men. It's coming from a place of hurt. We're just a hurt society now. Everyone's just hurt. Everyone's just broken. Everybody just, khalas, like, that's it. We're bro- everyone's broken. Everyone's got problems. Everyone's got trauma that we can't just be together no more. That's it. It's broken. <laughs> and we're allowing that, that view and we're allowing that society to just get into us more to the point to what to the point we're just completely divided and everyone's individual and everyone's away from each other mm-hmm. and then what what starts to happen after that you start to discover and you start to look for things in in your own little bubble and that's why you got the rise of certain things happening where people become curious to try new things it's no longer oh um men and women anymore it's the curiosity of looking elsewhere because you hate the other person you need to go find comfort over here that's a different topic in itself bro that's a different topic different, in uh, road in it yeah but it's, it's, it's social media it has a massive massive 100%. impact bro but like everyone is on social media now and everyone takes advice from social media and because of this certain individuals following that they'll be like oh yeah it's correct yeah. or you might have more likes or more views from the person it that, means it's credible it, yeah exactly it, it gives a form of certification that yeah this is certified Subhanallah, you know what I'm trying to say just because my man, bro, like before it was like this hadith was authenticated, exactly, etc. Exactly. Now it's like oh, but this person has As this many followers. This person, so it it means be, it's authentic. It must be right. You know it must saying? be Everything, so true. Everything's going well. Like yeah. he's showing everything's going well. His life, day in the life, da 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 yeah, da da. Yeah. Bro, like like people, them listen. That like, I've been in the game for like two years. Yeah, I've met individuals with hundreds of followers, but bro, their akhla. The, the, the way they ca- Wallahi bro It's like Really bro Like yeah. You showcase this here But then in real life Behind the screens When the phone's not out Just something else And then I've met I know individuals With zero followers bro They're the best type of You know what I'm saying They're the best type of individual You just want to be around them Constantly You know what I'm saying When they enter the room You just understand that You see that You feel their persona And you just You just want to be around them Don't let social media fool you yeah. Don't let these Like Men this you know this how can i say influences for yeah. you like because they're just showing you the good side of, of life so don't be fooled by the followers and and and, and the likes and the views and all of that stuff because all of that stuff is uh, is nonsense man you know what's it, mad if you go on google like who's the most powerful man in the world comes out prophet muhammad so. first bro first he was the most influential person in the world is the prophet, prophet muhammad that's you don't it. see no yeah. role models that you that guys thing, we follow now we don't see that yes. they will never reach that caliber they will never ever reach that caliber no. one can say oh but i was the most searched person and i was this i was the most viewed i was i have this many subscribers and this and that it's like but you you're not that powerful doesn't man. matter bro you're not in, compa- in comparison to what exactly what's in front of us you know nothing what I mean? bro a carpenter from where the middle east bro. <laughs> shepherd bro 
Do you know what I'm trying to say? Allah. Who couldn't who who couldn't, couldn't read nor write? Read or write. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Look, he he's able was able to establish a religion, you know, because of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from one end of the world to the other end of the world till this day, the fastest growing religion in the world, bro. Uh, you know, that uh, is the power of Islam. Do you know what I'm trying to say, bro? So. He's, he's the only man we should strive to be like, inshallah. Inshallah. May, may Allah make it easy for us to strive to be. All of us. I mean, Every I mean. single one of us, bro, man. You know, the the reason why, obviously, I did reach out to you in the first yeah. place um, was because I saw your journey that you made, all right? We obviously followed followed each other on, on Instagram, yeah. and then I saw you embark on a journey. I felt really, I felt this formal, like, I really wanted to be there. I really wanted to do what you did, bro. But what you did was, subhanAllah, so beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. Tell the people, bro. bro, bro you, uh, hijra, obviously, you walked yeah. from... So we walked from Mecca to Medina. We took the Hijra route, the, the route that the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr Siddiq took when they migrated to Medina, yeah. when they first migrated. Um, it's 550 kilometers, so that's about 350 miles, I think. It took us 16 days. SubhanAllah. Yeah, 16 days. Uh, it took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq... <sighs> 10 to 11 days yeah 10 to 11. yeah took them but obviously they were followed they were getting followed by yeah, yeah. You know, the enemy so they had to like Peace keep it yeah, stepping yeah. you get it whereas us we, we took our time um there was five brothers from the uk and there was 10 brothers from saudi arabia um the national they're not they were born in saudi but they were like from oman um uh they were also from sudan so they weren't originally saudis but uh, they were with us so one of them was actually an imam uh, he's, he does seerahs I mean not seerahs he does like ziyarat so he takes people around uh, and sh he shows he's like a guide like a guide yeah, he tour shows guide, yeah. a tour guide he shows people uh, uh, like history and the seerah of the Prophet so he was with us and um, yeah it was mad it, it was a mad mad uh, experience experience of a I lifetime. I think people are actually deep in what, so you've walked from Mecca yeah. to Medina. Yeah. I've personally done that route through coach. coach yeah, it takes about, <laughs> it took me about five hours. Five, five hours, yeah. Five hours. And I'm look, when I heard you went on this journey, yeah. the first thing I did was recollect that moment when I was sat in that coach and looking outside and that journey is just empty, bro. Yeah, bro it was, it's not, uh, it, it's so empty. It it's just mad. desert. It's well, just, yeah. Constant heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you when I saw when I thought this brother is about to embark on this journey, in my head I was thinking, yeah. fair play. It, it was crazy. That's why I was at home and I was thinking, oh, I really want to be there. I actually got in contact with the guy who's doing it. Yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said to him, I want to be involved next yeah, time. Inshallah, inshallah. Like, I really want to be involved. He's trying to do it each year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bro, it's one of those experiences where you have to do it. Like yeah. I can't. I can speak as much as I will. I will try to explain as much as I can. Yeah. Right now, but. You have to just be there and, and just take it in yourself. Like videos, pictures, it doesn't do justice. It doesn't do justice at all. But yeah, oh, Allah, bro. How did it start? So we was in, uh, obviously we had to do Umrah first. So we yeah. did our Umrah, bro. So we was in Mecca. We did um, uh, so we did the Umrah and then the next day. Is that your first time? Alhamdulillah, it's my fourth. Fourth yeah, time? Yeah, fourth time doing Umrah, yeah. So, so this is a different type of, different, it was a yeah, different yeah. experience. And... Um, we did our Umrah, and then once we did our Umrah, we had to meet the brothers. So the brothers, they're originally from Medina anyways, but they came to Mecca just to meet us and walk with us. So we wanted to take the exact route that the Prophet took. Mm. Um, so he he went, he um, so when Allah gave him the command to go to Medina, so when he went to, um, he was in Khadija, uh, Khadija's house, yeah, he was in his wife's house, and then after that, he went to Abu Bakr Anh's house because the enemy was outside Khadija's uh, house. They wanted to take the Prophet Sallam. So he then, you know, thought at night, let's move, let's uh, move away from, let's begin our trek. So he went to Abu Bakr Anh's house, and then both of them together, they took the, uh, they started the walk. But instead of going north directly to Medina. They took. They went south, so they went backwards to divert the enemy, to because they didn't want the enemy to follow them straight to Medina. They didn't want to take the caravan route, so they diverted and they went up Mount Thor. Mount Thor is one of the highest point in Mecca, and that's where the cave, you know, where the yeah, spider, yeah, the spider. Um, made the web and yeah, yeah. hit the. I went. I went there as well. The, the, it's a really, really. It's a high mountain. Very, very high. So we went up there first, and um, 
so we took the everything exact route, and then we then the the Prophet Sallam took the west coast. He went took the west coast. We took the west coast, and then the stories, bro. The stories within that journey, bro. Stories I didn't know of, bro. And it was like, wow, like the Umm Matbad, the woman who gave the description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She's the only woman that gave the description, and there was a hadith on yeah. on that as well. And then there was another story of Suraqa ibn Malik, who was a Quraysh at the time, and he wanted to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then and uh, there was hundred camels on both of their heads. So there's hundred camels on Abu Bakr's head, and there's hundred camels on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's head. So Suraq ibn Malik wanted that wanted that prize, you know. Uh, they call it I think it was like blood money or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, like a bounty. Yeah, like a, it was a bounty, yeah. And like even the stories on that, it, it was crazy. And we was obviously living in tents as well. There were some days where we lived in like when we got to like little cities, we was able to like live in like um a little cottage or something. They say lounge, but it's a villa. Yeah, they say they call it lounges, but it's it's actually a little villa. It's a small little it's a nice villa. villa. It was nice, some yeah. were nice, but bro, I preferred staying in tents, bro. Uh, Wallahi, bro, like being in the villa, just being bro. pure mosquitoes, bro, just yeah, in your yeah, room, yeah. bro. You're sleeping with mosquitoes, bro. <laughs> and you're that, you're fighting mosquitoes at like two a.m. in the morning, bro. So I, I just I just preferred sleeping in tents. Um, and then, yeah, it was going up mountains, down mountains, through deserts, but walking ten hours a day, ten to twelve hours a day. So covering around 40, 40 kilometers. Some oh, days were forty kilometers. Some easy. days were thirty-five. Not easy. It it wasn't. It was it was very difficult, but I feel like after the first few days, the physical aspect goes out the window, and it's more of a mental aspect and a spiritual aspect, spiritual. a high high spiritual aspect, because you're just reminding yourself like, rah, the best of man did this. You know, we're walking his path. You know, the Hijra route played a very very dominant role in Islam. Of course, you know, very, the, very pivotal bro, moment of our religion. Big is one of the... Very, very, very I big moment. Bro. And just to be embarking on that, bro, that journey, man, it's just, I'm, 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 I'm walking on the foot. Like, I might have been in the same place where the Prophet's been, you know what I'm saying? So even that, that just kept me going, bro, man. Like, my feet was split, bro. In the first few days, my feet cut. Both my feet just cut, yeah. bro, because of my boots. And um, I thought I was going to lose a toe, bro. So it's like... Even there, like, it was a mental thing, bro. It was a mental thing. But alhamdulillah, like, uh, like you, you start reflecting a lot. Like, you're walking 10, 10 to 12 hours a day, bro. You ain't got nothing much to do. Do you get it? So we'd start our walk at, like, 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. And then we'd walk until, like, 6.30 to pray Fajr. And then after we pray Fajr, we'd walk until, like, 11, 12 to have our first like meal and after that uh, we'd carry on our walk until Asr which is like 5 where we'd stay where we'd make camp and then they made it very easy for us because we had three three chefs with us as well so they'll they'll just meet us at each checkpoints and uh, they'll provide food it was the same old food it's good uh, some were good bro I'll be real, I'm not a fussy eater man like oh, yeah. I don't care bro yeah, like, yeah. there was one time that they gave us Goat, like goat was cooked, just the goat and onions. Goat head, goat everything. Bro, man was back in eyeball. I was I was back in brain. I was back in tongue with tahini. Like some of the brothers that was from the UK, they didn't touch it. So, bro, they were looking at man and they were gonna puke, bro. Like one of the brothers, Coach H, yeah, bro, he was looking at me eat it like it was Nando's, bro. <laughs> I didn't care, bro. For me, like, you know... Yeah, medium, spicy. <laughs> bro, there was no flavour, no nothing, bro. And like, I'm, I'm not fussy here, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. well, like, food is food for me. No, I just see it as food, innit? And I was just backing it. Them man's in it. So these man's would just munch on... Like, they'll go to, like, shops to get crisps and stuff. These <laughs> man's will be backing crisps and that. I'm like, nah, I'm not about that, bro. I need, I need fuel, bro. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. food, sleep was the most important thing for me on that journey. And... Yeah. It was mad, bro, man. Like we saw gins and like, yeah, bro. We saw a you gin. Saw what? We saw a gin, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Explain. A gin, bro. Explain. So they call it Abu Fanos, isn't it? Father of lanterns. Yeah. So we're walking now. It was like four o'clock in the morning, four thirty. Just a desert, bro. It was dark, pitch, pitch black, bro. We're walking, and usually, like in the in the in the early mornings, I kind of like go ahead of everyone. 
and just like just walk, just I got my headphones in. I'm just everyone's silent, bro. Everyone's just doing the dhikr, the Quran. That's what we do in the morning. Just yeah. everyone's on there, or nobody's talking to nobody. And then we're just walking fast pace, bro. Three point seven kilometers a pace, bro. That's fast That's for walking. Very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then from a distance, I see a light, bro. And I'm thinking, cool. It's just probably like a bystander or somebody that just lives there, bro. This lift, this light is moving fast. So I'm thinking it's a motorbike now. And then coming towards you, like. It's like going sideways. Mm. Like it's just coming. So it starts here and it's just going fast. Like lightning speed, bro. Lightning speed, bro. And I had my headphones, so I couldn't hear nothing. But the brothers behind me, like my boy Jahidu and, and Faimu, they were saying it was calling us. Like it was telling us to come, come, come. Allah, and the guy in front of us, he kind of stopped me. And I'm thinking like, why, why is this brother moody? Like usually he just lets me in front. Like he doesn't mind. These brothers are thinking that we're scared. Like these British guys... These British guys are scared. And um, every man just didn't say in the Ayatul Kursi and yeah, that, bro. They I were like just... The kid, the kid went from like the, 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 the sound, the, the noise of the Vizikir went higher, bro. Like out of the blue. So, so I'm just holding hands and that. And <laughs> well, yeah, me and Jai were just holding hands. So, so hard, it's, hard, it, it was hard, mad. Hard, and then we're walking, we're walking. And obviously, you know, in Jin, when the closer we got to it, like it kind of like backed off. Yeah. It faded, faded, but bro, it was, it was fast, bro. And then we got to Fajr, and the sh- one, of the, the sheikh, that was with us, he said, that that was the jinn, <laughs> their 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 duty, their what their objective is, is to try and get you off your path. So you follow it, and then you go to him, and then your path, he's got you off your path now. Now you're lost, and so that they 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 just play about with you. They play about with you, and um yeah, after a while he did. He just he just gave in and just cut, but bro, that that light was fast. I didn't take no notice of it, but the brothers behind me, like, they were. Allah Akbar. Yeah, I was just zoning in. Did it some car, bro? I just yeah. kept kept. Are you listening to him as well? Yeah. Oh, bro, it's my. Yeah, is it? Bro, my I, to, as well. I wanna go. I wanna go check him. Inshallah, bro. My go to. He's um, amazing, bro. Sheikh Maher Al Maqli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's OG, bro. He's the, I, I listened to Sheikh Maher Al Maqli and also did it Did it too? Yeah, but was you was he there when you prayed in Mecca? No, 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 no. He, he was wasn't. There. There. He was there when I was in two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. My first went, he was there. But my second time and my third time, he wasn't there. Yeah, he had the Mecca. Um, he had the Maghrib and Aisha prayers when I was out there. It's just sick, isn't it? I Different. didn't want the prayer to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not want the it prayer just, to finish. Like, just, the voice and the the way he just hits yeah, you yeah, in yeah, your yeah, core. Yeah. I could feel him when it was mad. It's, it's just, Beautiful it's recital. Us, man. Yeah. Man. So 16 days. 16 days, bro. In the desert. In the desert. Hot. There was some... Some days were like, would walk s- seven hours in the desert. Mm. Heat is just above us. Sun is just above us. It was twenty three. They timed it. Correct. They timed it properly. They didn't want us. To, they wanted us to walk during the day, uh, during the morning. Sorry, obviously the hadith where Prophet said, sorry, sorry. you know, there's blessings in the early mornings. So we took as much advantage as possible with that. And he'd also travel during the early mornings because the enemy wouldn't. They'll try and walk during the day. They wouldn't walk during the night. Yeah. So they had to travel during the night. And obviously we had a compass where they. They were navigating themselves through like stars. Back then, they used to use the stars and stuff to navigate. And um, uh, and then uh, what, was, what was the question again? Uh, you walked for sixteen days Six- in the heat. And you just described oh, it the me. desert. And um, yeah, and then, then some days there will be uh, uh, mountains where you're going up mountains, steep mountains, then going down, then going up. So it's just, and then in a couple of days you won't see like cars, you won't see nothing. You just see, you just see camels, yeah. uh, goats. Did you see any like of the bed, uh, bedrooms? Bedrooms, couple yeah, bedrooms. bedrooms. You see couple bedrooms. Oh, yeah. They're nice people. Nice. Like, they just want to come and give you milk. Like, they'll just give you cow milk. I mean, camel milk, sorry. <laughs> and uh, there was no cows there. We didn't see no cows at all. Mm. Um, uh, donkeys. Wow. It, all in all, you know what? It's just, you reflect in it. That's, that's, it became a norm after a few days. After the first few days, it just became a norm. Sleeping at this time, waking up this time, walking for this many hours, eating at this time, eating then, sleeping then. It just it just became a routine. But the reflection you contemplate on that journey is just it's it's amazing. Like it's things that you wouldn't you wouldn't reflect upon being here. And like when I was over there, I was reflecting about how the camels were made. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, talking about camels, bro. Like, some people would say, like, such a boring animal. But, bro, these like, camels were up close to me and I was just deep in it. Like, subhanAllah, like, look how you have been created, man. Your eyelashes. The reason why everything is on you is because there's a reason behind it. Yeah. You know, the humps. I even did a post on that as well. You know, it, it's just amazing. There's the sand, the desert, the, the, the mountain. Everything, bro. You just reflect on the creation of Allah, and it's like, wow. And then you made it to Medina. And then we made it to Medina. Medina, there was a ceremony there. Obviously, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ended his walk in Masjid Quba. Uh, the two. This is the first masjid, the white one. It was the first masjid he built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah we, that's yeah, where he yeah, ended. Yeah. That's where the camel stopped. His mm. camel, he stopped there. So they thought we'll make the masjid there. So they made, made Masjid Al-Quba. It wasn't the way it is now. Obviously back then it was probably like mud and yeah. sticks and stuff. But now it's more it's done up and stuff. So we ended it there. And then I'm thinking, yeah, it's done now. Bro, we walked all the way to Medina. Uh, the, 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 the Masjid Nabawi. Nabawi yeah. yeah, we walked all the way to Masjid Nabawi, which was another turn. So I'm thinking, yeah, yeah we're done. Alhamdulillah. There was a ceremony there as well. And we met a lot of shayukhs on the journey as well. Um, the, the brother that... Sheikh Abdullah, he made a book, he studied, he's like 80 years old. He studied the Hijra route for 30 years before he made the book. Oh, the Sira book. So before he made the Hijra book, he studied it for 30 years. Bro, he looks 40 years old, bro. Oh, the amount of noor that comes out of his face, bro. Allah mabarak, bro. And, and, and he, he, he will be releasing, like he said, he will be releasing it in English. Um, so if, if it does come out, you know, it's yeah, easy yeah. for you to check out. And uh, yeah, we, we, we use his book... Um, and they were just they were just happy and these, these shooks and they're like raw like following our book so they'll come meet us and then we'll have like traditional Saudi meals like big big like a gathering and with our tents and stuff and then they'll just come and they'll feed us feed us feed us feed us and that's all it was bro man what did it feel like completing that walk from Mecca to Medina like, sixteen days later like when we went into Medina there's like a a zone there's like an arch where it says you're in uh, the haram 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 um, checkpoint so Medina's got one as well when we walked when we walked past it bro I fell into sujood bro oh, okay. every man fell into sujood I fell into sujood oh, bro I was like, I was thinking Allah ya Rabb like anything could have happened to me on that journey I could have lost my foot do you know what I mean there was a lot of there was a lot of trials there was a lot of tests on, on on that journey, and I just Alhamdulillah, Allah, you have made, you have come, you have brought me here in peace, in peace. So I thank you, and and I started tearing up, bro. I started tearing up, bro. Kiss, I was like, hugging every one of my brothers. I kissed my brothers on the forehead. Alhamdulillah, we done it. You know what I'm saying? And then and then now there, there was a there's a, there's a sunnah way of walking as well. It's like fast speed. Yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like it's like this, isn't it? Speed walking. So we started speed walking now, like mm. and bro, bro, then we saw myself cool, and we started fasting, faster, 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 and then we saw it and like it was like a You know when you see the Qaba for the first time? Yeah. Like how was it? Me I cried. It was like that. Really? It was like that. Even though I went Umrah four times after yeah, the, yeah. after the first time, I think like the second, third time when I see the Qaba, it was like it was like okay, it was like a Alhamdulillah, I'm here. Yeah. But the first time, nothing beats the first time. But this felt like the first time seeing the Qaaba. You know? But I was watching, I was looking at Masjid Nabawi. Nabawi, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, it's, uh, man. What an like, achievement, you, man. You, you learn a lot about yourself as well. You learn a lot about, it. you get tested a lot on that journey. But at the same time, you learn. So. You know what? Like, I, I'm someone who comes from a very physical background yeah. of training and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've done a run from almost near Brighton to yeah. London, just by myself. One day I decided I want to do a run, I just want to push myself. And in that journey, I discovered myself a lot because I started to push myself to a point where I mm. never really went. Mm. Like on the other side of that hardship, there's a true beauty that I discovered. And on that journey, I was very lo alone and very in my head, just, just looking back at my hardships and overcoming it, right? I can't imagine for 16 days, knowing that you're doing such a challenging journey yeah. but at the same time it's the journey that the greatest man to ever step foot yeah, into this yeah. planet yeah. Muhammad yeah. Wasallam, he did as well and you're following that route yeah. that, 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 that is was, uh, the that nothing compares to yeah. that and my run anyone's run any of these 
you know, I don't know if you know David Goggins, for yeah, example, yeah, ran like, hundreds yeah, of yeah, miles, yeah, yeah. marathons, Mania, ultra. Bro. Yeah, but Sick, that, yeah. that's nothing in comparison to that kind of challenge, nah, bro. That nah, challenge, nah. that challenge then, nah, it's a beautiful like, challenge, bro. It, it, they made it very easy for us. Of know? course, not about, yeah. it's spiritual journey yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the beauty yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Because with some of these challenges, they can be physically and mentally mm -hmm. challenging. But I think the element that makes this journey beautiful is the spiritual journey yeah, behind it. 100%. I'm sure you guys felt a lot. You probably got closer to uh, yeah. Allah. You oh, felt oh, so bro. close. You felt <laughs> close to your brothers crazy, around you as well. Crazy, so there was that spiritual element that made it 10 bro. times better. Yeah. And what was that feeling like coming to Medina? For me, my experience with Medina is a very peaceful place. Yeah, very, very peaceful. And they say it as well because at the time, uh, in the Prophet's times, there was Mecca, which was very chaotic. Yeah. Very busy, very hectic, a lot of going, a lot of things going on. But Medina was peaceful. Peace. Everything's best about that than the water, the dates, everything, yeah. the people. You you feel it. Mm. Like you and as soon as you go in, you just feel tranquility and peace, bro. Like you don't want to leave, you know. And then that's why the Prophet bless yeah, the so. people of Medina, the food, everything that comes out of Medina, bless it. And, and even the masjid, yeah, I could bro. spend the whole the day there, and me, bro. Just. Spend the whole yeah, day here. Yeah. You walk inside. There's first of all the smell. Yeah. The smell. You f you can smell, smell it straight oh. away, and then you've got just the tranquility. Yeah. You go into the masjid and you hear the birds just chirping. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just huge. It's so nice. It's all so big and I don't lie, like I look back at it as a moment of the most peaceful time in my life, and there's a silence like no other. Like a yeah. silence that no nothing else can be. And I, I remember that moment of time just standing in the cemetery. I just looked everywhere around me and I just thought to myself, there's nothing with you here in this moment of time. Nothing comes with you. And I'm just looking and there's genuinely thousands of stones on the floor. No names, no nothing. No bro. names. Your name doesn't even come with you. Nameless. You're referred to as the body, bro. The body. Everything in this dunya is temporary, brother, man. Even the name, bro. Even your name is temporary. Even your name is not going to come with you. Nothing comes with it's, you. It's, it's a, it, is, it is scary, man. But, but it's a it's a awakening. Wake it's up call, bro. a big wake-up call. Because I had the opportunity to, to go there and to help a body come down. But next time, I'm going to be the body that's been brought inside. The body, exactly. And so some people don't even wake up from these type of stuff, bro. The amount of stories I've heard in graveyards, bro. People like... You know, as soon as they put the body in, they're having splits and stuff like that. And like, Back to reality. Are you okay, bro? Back like, to normal conversations. Do you know what I mean, bro? Yeah. Like, come on, man. It, it's it's something, you know, you have to think about. You have to think about death, bro. Yeah. You have to think about death every single day. Because, bro, even visiting the graveyard, bro, it softens the heart, bro. You know, it softens the heart. And it also reminds you of death. Reminds you where you'll end up. So... Like it's I, I very I go to the graveyard like every two weeks, every two weeks I go to, until this day like, and you know my mother till this day helps me bro, nice till this day. So for example, I went to her see I went to see her yesterday actually. Really. And um, usually sometimes I'd go, but then that week I've had like a little upset with my sister or I've upset with somebody else and stuff like that. But then I'll go visit my mother that day. Uh, that week, sorry, later that week, and I'll look at the grave and I'll start laughing at it, bro. And I'll be like, like bro, I really upset somebody because of this. I've said something because of this. Look, look where I'll end up. Do you know what I'm saying? There'll be dirt over me. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and apologise to that somebody. Just so I don't have that. Just so they don't hold something towards me. You know, I don't want to be accountable. You know what I'm saying? So, the death, it reminds me, and you know, just... Humbles you. Humbles you. Stay in your lane. Don't upset nobody. No, we're humans, bro. You yeah, know what I'm trying yeah. to say we're gonna make mistakes, bro. Nobody's perfect, bro. We're not perfect. And there might be in the, in in that week I might in, in within those two weeks I might say something, but then I'll go to the grave. I'd remember. Then maybe the following two weeks I'll say something again. I'll go back to the grave, and then I'll remember. You get it? So it's like a it's constant like reminder. Constant reminder, you know. Till this day, my mother helps me. Alhamdulillah, you know? Alhamdulillah, bro. Uh, and that's it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about death, bro. Death yeah. is something. It's going to happen, and You know? Just have to be prepared. 
you know, we have to, may Allah take us when he's most pleased. Yeah, you know, that's the so only I was thing say, we can say. Allah take us when he's most pleased. Well, yeah, man. Bro. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for this as well, man. Thank no, you for this no, conversation. No, anytime, brother. I really man. appreciate this conversation. Oh, oh, I wish I could have said more. No. Nah. Obviously, it's like my second podcast, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was a bit, but this is this has been one of energy was good, yeah, man. This energy has been was good, bro. A, a really, really yeah. helpful conversation. Nah, I appreciate, it, bro. And man. I'm so grateful to have you and to know to meet you and to have you as a nah. brother in Islam, bro. Well, I love you for you the sake of Allah. Allah. Sama, bro, scheme, truly, Vice truly Vice love you for the sake Allah. of Allah, man. Make sure. Make sure you message man in that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and inshallah, I'll give you the, the, the perfume. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah 100%, bro. And also, I just want to say one more thing before the... Uh, yeah, go on. For the, um, the Hijra route. So when we finished the Hijra route, the, 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 when we got to Medina, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, the, the sheikh, the imam that was with us, he said, from this journey, like this journey is gone. The Hijra route is done. It's in the past now. We've already done it. We have to move forward now. We have to look forward. And that is to, 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 to love Allah. To love Allah. But the only way to love Allah sincerely is to love what He loves. And who does He love the most? Rasulullah. Oh. So if you want to love Allah, you have to love Rasulullah. And one thing from this trip, what I got is also the love that I have, the love that I have now for the, for the Prophet, which I may or not have had before. But this whole 16 days, it made me get closer to him. SubhanAllah. You know, and I had the exact thing when I came back. Yeah. You just... No, no, no. I'm being, I'm being so serious. I had the same f effect. It had the same effect on me when yeah. I came back. Before, I never truly understood. Yeah, 100. I never truly valued. You know no, the man. prophet, but you don't yeah, truly yeah, yeah, value. Yeah. I came back and I had this love. It's an appreciation for us all. Like. Thank you, man. Like, thank you for for leading the yeah. way. You know when you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, I didn't realise what I'm actually saying. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's yeah. deep, bro. Yeah, and it's it, deep. I'm so glad you it, touched upon that. It comes back to everything, you know, with the masculinity and how to be a yeah. man and all of that, 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 that. It's perfect, Romo. It's, it's perfect. It's easy, simple. Just it's follow perfect. him and that's it. And when you follow him, when you love him, that's when your love for Allah is established that's when your love for Allah is, is grounded and nothing nothing in this world can break you your marriage nothing can break it if you start with Allah if you start with the way Rasulullah treated his wife if you treat your wife like that your children like that your friends like that your neighbour like that your father your mother everything, whatever you do everything. when you treat your parents when you do that when you strive to be like him nothing in this dunya can break it bro nothing they could do everything they want to you they can show you anything but nothing will break it, bro. And that's... There you go, bro. That's We've it. got homework to do, bro. Yeah, that's Allah, it. Bro. We will have homework to do. We just have to strive, 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 strive. Strive. Be the best Muslim you can be. This is your yeah. journey. Your journey. My journey. Help one another on this journey. And that's it. You know? We come from Allah and we return back to Him. Inna lillahi wa inna, inna lillahi wa yeah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Great way to yeah. finish it. Listen, we've all got work to do. We've yeah. all got homework to do. You guys heard it from us. Great conversation with my brother make sure you check Barakallah him out Fiq. and um thank you bro Barakallah Fiq for having me may Allah thank bless so this channel man and, and make it make it let it grow so Ameen. it can benefit Allah us. I just want to do stuff like this for the sake of Allah nah, nah. That's it. no personal gain no nothing but I don't want to it's not me this is a way of amplifying these messages nah. Allah if I can use a platform uh, a channel yeah. to help amplify a message yeah. and to spread out some sort of value that's my mission that's done, it. bro. And, and, and look, look, you know that video of Fajr? Yeah. That's where I first saw you, bro. Really? Wallahi, and it hit me hard, bro. What you said, we the people waking up to take to, their dogs to out for walk. Dogs out, yeah. Us, man, can't even wake up to think the one that gives us life, the one that gives us the ability to breathe, see, hear, everything, bro. We can't do that. Then, then we need to we need to really really Allah work. Akbar, bro. Big reality check, guys. Make sure you check out my brother on Instagram. It's Fits, fits by F. Fits by yeah, F. Fits by fits F. By F. Um, you can check out my channel, Voice of Idris. Subscribe to the channel. Do whatever you can, man. Guys, like yeah. the video, obviously. It helps boost yeah, the video sure. so you can get out there to more people, inshallah. And yeah, man. See you guys in the next episode, inshallah. Sure. Thank you so much, bro. Bless Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Appreciate it. Bro.